on this week's episode of Bayou Wild TV. Today, taxidermy has actually become more than just a fish or a deer hanging on a wall. It's become a uh, almost a museum type effect where game rooms are being built, uh, very elaborate type displays, which I think you're going to see at this show. So this bear is the current number one Pope and Young world record. Most people are just surprised by the size. You don't really realize how big they are. The members of the LTA are, are aspiring taxidermists, of course. You know, we all start at the beginner level and continuously work our way up to get to the master level. The world is yours, you just have to go after it. Closed captioning is brought to you by Global Outdoors. Find your next adventure and share your experiences with others by downloading the Global Outdoors mobile app or visiting globaloutdoors.com. Every day, we strive to preserve traditions that have spanned generations. Around every turn of the bayou, Mother Nature reveals unique people, places, and experiences. And the bounty of animals and fish. Well, in Louisiana, we just call that land yak. I'm Don Debut. I'm Chris Lacop. I'm Captain Martha Spencer. Join us as we document the adventure sportsmanship, and heritage that make us Bayou Wild. You know, one of the side benefits of going out and accomplishing a successful hunting or fishing trip is the memories it creates. And there's no better way to preserve those memories than with a taxidermy mount. This is one of my favorites here, a pair of hooded mergansers, the hen and the drake. And whenever I look at this in my office, it brings me back to that day we were hunting with a world champion duck caller, Mike Smith, over in Delacroix. Uh, Martha was there, we were filming it for a Bayou Wild show. When I look at these birds, I remember that exact moment, who I was with, where I was, and how I did it. And there's a lot of those memories. But in some cases, it's not just the memories that taxidermy provide, there's actually some competition among the professional taxidermists. of the year, there's a group of artists who gather, but they're not using paintbrushes and easels. They're dealing with fins, feathers, and fur. Welcome to the world of taxidermists. Commercial mount is a good looking piece you're hanging on the wall and it tells a story. When you want to compete in the taxidermy world, um, it's very challenging because you have to bring that animal back looking like it was when it was alive. You have to put the nictating membranes in there. You have to create the nasal passage going into the nose. You have to create the lips. But it's, it's extremely more challenging to compete and it just ups your game because you know what you're up against and it just enhances your ability to be a better taxidermist if you want to take it to that level. To be a judge, you had to be a competitor because when you compete, it, it, it offers a a pathway for excelling in taxidermy, and, and the better you get, uh, the higher awards you win. I started judging uh, my first show in 79. What we look for is a comparison of taxidermy to nature. Nobody's perfect, there's only one perfect person in the world and that's God and we know that but you can get close uh, we we look for the things that uh, you see in a live animal and uh, which is very difficult to replicate 
Back when I started in 1970 at 10 years old, none of that was around. No one shared secrets, and uh, you pretty much got thrown out of shops if you asked a question, and it personally happened to me, which was my driving force to get where I am now to make a career out of this. If you're lucky enough to bag a deer or a hog this season, bring it here to Double D. Double D processes hogs and exotic game and guarantees your product is always the meat you brought to Double D. Double D Meats in Bogalusa, home of country smoked, spicy jalapeno cheddar and other customized flavors. Bring your deer or your hog here to Double D where you always get your meat back in return. It's worth a drive to Bogalusa from anywhere. Double D. Delta Marina is Plaquemines Parish fishing one-stop. Get live bait, fuel, ice, tackle, and marine supplies. Then launch into the world's most productive saltwater fishing. Return to the fishing cleaning station, relax in first-class cabins overlooking the bayou, all in Delta Marina's safety video monitored parking lot. Need a fishing charter guide? Delta Marina can hook you up. Cook your catch in your kitchenette or dine in the upstairs restaurant. Visit Delta Marina for a day or a week. Stop in just off Highway 11 down Rosemary Drive in Empire. Visit the deltamarina.com. Discover the taste of Louisiana that's seasoned just right. Boiled to perfection. And rich with tradition. A taste that's savory. Crispy. And a little sweet. Discover the taste of Louisiana fish fry products. If I've learned anything about working with taxidermists over the years, it's how generous they are in sharing their experiences and their talent that got them to the point where they are. Uh, Larry Blumquist is the perfect example of a guy who started from nothing, worked his way up, and really built an industry for himself, and now he's putting back to the industry of taxidermy. I got started in taxidermy at a very young age. I was 11 years old. I took the old Northwestern School of Taxidermy correspondent course. You go out and you shoot your first squirrel, you, you don't want to just eat it, you want to do something with the skin. So that's how I started. But back in the uh, 50s and 60s, taxidermy was uh, kind of in a very secretive era. I had the opportunity to go into taxidermy full time at an early age, I was in my 20s. And uh, the rewards are just bountiful because the individuals that come in to use our services have been successful. They're very proud of what they've taken and the effort that they've given to take it. So uh, that has been uh, super interesting. The other reward is doing something that uh, if you had, to, had a favorite hobby and you were able to make a living at it, I don't think there's a better thing in life. It's rewarding when I see them 20 and 30 years early, later and they come up to me and say, man, it's still hanging on the wall and it's beautiful. But it keeps that memory of that moment there. So. There's a lot of rewarding parts to it. I walk in his shop probably as a 15 or 16 year old young fella just, just yearning to learn this, this business. And he was the first guy that ever talked to me about taxidermy without asking me to leave his shop. And so that was probably eight, when I was 18 or something. I'm 60 now and I've never forgotten that moment. 
and I couldn't think of anybody else out there that would be more deserving of our very first Louisiana Pioneer Award. But our industry since the 70s, especially through the 80s, has just gone through what I call a renaissance. And this renaissance has brought forth uh, commercial taxidermy work comparable to what you used to see in museums many years ago. So this bear is the current number one Pope and Young world record. Uh, the owner of our company, Brush Country Studios, Chris Kamak, he, he shot this bear at eight yards. He kind of, he had come up with the idea of wanting to use one of these eagles in it. And so we kind of went with that, the bear and the eagle, and then everything just kind of started coming together. To mount the bear, um, there was probably 100 hours in the bear. The actual tree we found with the burnouts and we liked that, so it's just too big to use. So we had to go through here and replicate and mold this tree. There's hundreds and hundreds of hours in that. There's several hundred more hours in the base itself. This particular eagle is actually made of chicken feathers. This is a, this is a reproduction. You can see it does have a, a band on it and that's just saying that it is not a real eagle. When I saw that grizzly bear, it brought back memories of Alaska because I had one pretty much in the same position that confronted me on a trail. But it's so impressive and I think this is something that serves to really showcase an animal that the photographs, the movies, the zoos really don't do him justice. But being a taxidermy, uh, a specified mount, it allows the, the viewer to get right up close and personal and really feel like they get the, the total immensity of what that, that beast is. Uh, this bear has been from Texas to Nebraska to Missouri to Nevada. It was designed for that to travel and it was not mounted as a competition piece by any means. Most people are just surprised by the size. You don't really realize how big they are. But we've done several museums, private museums, uh, some public museums. There is the Warren Wildlife Gallery that's in Austin um, that is for conservation education, owned by a man named Rick Warren. Uh, we've done the trophy room in Brady, Texas for Champion Ranch. Uh, one of our biggest is the great migration scene coming down the staircase with 22 life-size wildebeest four life-size zebras, three life-size crocodiles, uh, which is a really neat piece. My wife and I have had the opportunity to travel to Europe, uh, New Zealand, Australia, China, and uh, I think the American public would really be surprised how big hunting is still is in Europe. And you keep thinking, hunting in Europe, but there's a lot of it. I don't see it from the standpoint of uh, it's going to end one day. Uh, it's very important that we get our, our children interested in hunting and fishing, uh, but taxidermy is going to follow that same suit. The future is good and bright, I feel, for all of us, but we do have to stay on our toes and uh, speak good things about what conservation is and moving forward. Coming up next, we're in St. James Paris today at Uncle Larry's. Come on in, show you what's going on here. All right, ready, set, gumbo, Don. At Paris Coffee, we wanted to create a coffee brand that people would love to drink every day. A medium roast 
are, are nice, bright, nutty coffees. Our dark roast coffees are smooth and rich. I think it's important for consumers to recognize that sometimes it, it's your neighbor that you're supporting. People can go to parishcoffee.com to find the entire selection of coffees. Hi, I'm Miss Louisiana Julia Claire Williams on behalf of the Louisiana Propane Dealers. We're all used to bad weather in Louisiana and we know the benefits of clean, portable propane gas during those emergencies. But if your propane tank is ever damaged in a storm, you should have it inspected by a certified propane dealer. And if you ever smell gas, turn the system off at the tank and call your dealer immediately. Propane is safe energy for everyone and we want to keep it that way. This is Don Dubuque asking you to join me as a member of the Coastal Conservation Association. For 30 years, CCA has worked in Louisiana to conserve our incredible fisheries, making sure that our fishing is great today and for generations to come. Whether looking out for redfish and specks, eliminating gill nets, building reefs across the coast, or work at the state capitol and in D.C., CCA is doing what's best for the fish and the sport we love so much. Your $30 membership will ensure that this work and our great fishing endures well into the future. Go to CCALouisiana.com and join CCA today. In 1967, Dutch Stogner realized his dream to run his own meat market. Fifty years and three generations later, Double D and the Stogner family still operate with Dutch's original commitment to quality. Pick up some Double D sausage today and share your good times with us on Facebook. Welcome back to Bayou Wild TV. Today I'm with a buddy of mine, Uncle Larry Roussel. And he's not really my uncle, he's more like a brother. We go back a long way fishing and cooking, and Larry, you come a long way in cooking. You got your own line of products now. Tell us about these products from Uncle Larry. Well, Don, first I want to welcome you to Uncle Larry's Research and Development Center. Okay. <laughs> but no, I got, a, I got a line I started off uh, when I retired from my job, 2015. This product, my seasoning, and flavor enhancer. I needed to get that off the ground before I could get the rest of my product because the foundation to my other products, my ready set gumbo, my ready set over gumbo, and my student a few is my seasoning and flavor enhancer. So. All right, now you also got food service in the plan. Yeah, well, the, the plan for the ready set gumbo and the ready set okra gumbo, yeah, any food service, any restaurant that you're not happy with your, your gumbo bait, the gumbo that you serve your customers, Come see me, I can make your job a lot easier, quicker, and better. So let's get going with the Ready, Set, Gumbo. All right, Ready, Set, Gumbo, Don. Ready, what we're gonna do, a little bit of oil, a little bit of oil, but you can, I tell you, use a quarter cup, but you just need to wet the bottom of the, of the pot. One pound of boneless chicken thighs is what I recommend. You could use the breast, you could use bone in, but you can use rotisserie chicken, but one pound of boneless chicken thighs one half pound of one length of, of your favorite smoked sausage to undo it. I'm gonna brown that meat. Once that meat is brown, takes about five minutes, okay? We're gonna let that brown. I'm gonna turn it down a little bit because that's browning. Mm -hmm. Then the next step, after five minutes of browning, we're gonna go to step number two, and that's set. So we turned this off just a few minutes ago. We got this coming on. So now we're gonna set the gumbo base. Ready, set, gumbo. We're gonna set that here, pop. We're gonna set the gumbo base in the pot. It's, well, I should add that this is a concentrated product, so it's a half, you know, four, four cups, but when you add the water, you got a half gallon of gumbo liquid. Now, um, how important is it that you get the water to the base mix exact? Can you make it a little thicker, or a little stronger? Very good, very good question, Tom. I'm glad you brought that up. Yeah, you can, if you want, if you like a real thick gumbo, you're gonna get the spiciness with it now. If you like it thick, what you do, two cups of water. If you like it thinner than this, you go five, even six cups of water. So if you like your gumbo kind of soupy, you got that, but if you like it thick, almost like a jambalaya, you got that too. That's exactly, very good point. So yeah, this is gonna to come to a boil. That's gonna take about 10 minutes. So whenever we come to a boil, we're gonna shut it back so I'll cut it back to a simmer. Here's when gumbo's at its best. After we shut it down, two things are gonna happen. The chicken and the sausage, especially they wanna do it, they're gonna absorb that flavor of the gumbo as they sink. The oil is gonna to come to the top, you skim the oil. That's when gumbo's at its best. Uh -huh. 
flavor. With and that. we got a lot of hunters that watch the program too. Could you substitute rabbit or duck or dog? Absolutely, or absolutely. A good, a good smoked rabbit mm. uh, gumbo is great. And uh, you know, but it's gonna take longer to tenderize that rabbit though. If you like seafood, you like you said a hunter. Yeah. People on the go, people busy, people look don't have enough time to cook. If you get the ready set okra gumbo base, this is aimed towards seafood. This is the ready set okra gumbo base. We did a seafood gumbo with some Louisiana shrimp and Louisiana crabs, okay? Five minutes and you eat this gumbo right here. All right, here we go. Here's the test. Ready, set, gumbo. Mmm. Say bon. That's what we want here. Thank you very much, Don and all. Here's the seafood gumbo. I'm not going to taste it because I'm going to let you, you your, your wonderful staff try this after, but I know it's going to be good. But crab and shrimp from Louisiana, the best crab and shrimp around. There okay. it is, Ready, Set, Gumbo, and the other Uncle Larry's products. Tell them where they can find it. All right, you can find it from really my stronghold, the River Parish of St. James, St. John, St. Charles, Ascension. Now I'm getting into Livingston, but hopefully with, uh, with this, uh, your show, I'm gonna start expanding throughout South Louisiana and other areas. So. And your website, of course, they oh. can find you on our website by you all TV and the link right to yours, but they go direct to yours. Okay, direct to just go uh, Uncle Larry's Food and Spice. You're gonna find that. Just all you search that on the web, uh, internet, find it. You can go to my store and buy it online, or you can shoot me an email and I'll tell you if there's a store in your area that carries it. All right. Y'all go away. We got some business to take care of. Let's go. We love our children. We protect them. We guide them. We prepare them for life in the world. With all that we do, from deep in our hearts, we cannot control all things. Life-threatening illnesses and disabilities affect far too many of our children each year. While we cannot change the circumstance, we can make dreams come true. Dreams to provide hope, to provide spiritual healing and strength, to provide moments of happiness and relief in the hardest of times. We can give a glimmer of light and hope in a time of darkness and despair. Join huntofalifetime.org to help make dreams come true, to provide hope for children with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Hunt of a Lifetime is a nonprofit organization fulfilling dreams for hunting and fishing trips to youth 21 and under with life-threatening illnesses and disabilities. Visit huntofalifetime.org to learn how you can make a difference. So everyone knows that deer hunting is probably my favorite form of hunting, even though I enjoy lots of it. Even though deer hunting might be my favorite, I feel like taxidermy with birds might be my favorite thing to preserve because the few that I've had done are just so beautiful and the ducks that I've chosen to mount are my first wood duck here that was shot at the island down in uh, Parody and this was a slew hunt and we'd only done a few of them and I'll never forget it because it was very short lived and very quick. I had to preserve the one and only wood duck that I shot. Uh, he's just remarkable with all the colors and even just having him stand like that because you don't really get to see him stand, they're moving so quickly. Um, I'm also pretty fond of my speckle belly goose from Arkansas because it's just so large and just in a moving flight. So birds are certainly my favorite thing to immortalize in terms of taxidermy, but I will get a deer someday.
I get, I'm often asked the question, what's the most difficult animal you've worked on or what's most difficult to do? Uh, birds are one of the more difficult to really become very efficient and, and good at. Uh, the wild turkey was a challenge because it's a, it's a big bird. You've got a, a head with no hair on it, so you can't cover up faults. Fish are uh, very much alike, except when you get to saltwater fish. And most saltwater fish today are reproduced. But you can skin mount saltwater fish, but it's a very tricky process. And a taxidermist would have to charge twice as much as they would to do a reproduction, to do it and do it correctly. So your saltwater fish would be one of the more difficult. As hunters and fishermen, we appreciate the beauty in each animal we take. Each mount brings back a memory of the hunt and is truly artistic. I've watched this growth. Uh, I have a uh, large taxidermy trade journal and I produce a large world championship trade show. And it's allowed me to see the evolution of our great art. I like to call it an art, and it is. Uh, how it's evolved and moved forward. It's a fascinating art, and it is definitely an art form. When you take a skin and a pair of antlers or horns and turn it into something that looks like it's breathing, and your client tells you the thing looks like it's alive, that's the best payback you'll ever get. The work of these award-winning taxidermists mimic an animal in its natural habitat and remind us why we enjoy each pursuit that is Bayou Wild.